of you hardcore wrestling coming out to the ring. You see the Davis family along with Fritzy. You heard from him last week. He's a little insane. I'm not sure if Mikey Tenderfoot's coming back. You saw the beating that the AOD, including Mikey Tenderfoot, just laid down on Cedric Strong and then on SoCal Val. The force of the nature by Scoot Andrews on SoCal Val. I, normally I like these kind of antics by the AOD. They crack me up, but I don't like Scoot Andrews having to take it out on SoCal Val. It's not her fault, but the Strong Brothers, the Shanes, and Vicious and Delicious ended up shaving Scoot Andrews' head. But he's here to take it on anybody and everybody, I suppose. And right now, entering the Davis family, Sean, you saw him here last week. He came up on the short end of the stick against Death Row Jet, though. But they do very, very well in six-man action. And they're going to be taking on some very old nemesis of theirs. Come up to the ring together. It's going to be Jarrell Clark. It's going to be comic book guy Anderson, and it's going to be Mark Zapp, the super fan. They had an issue with them back at the Expo Center, the Davis family attacking Zout. Comic book guy Anderson made the save. Jarrell Clark, who was also in the match, he ended up coming in to help out as well. That's led to this match right here tonight. Normally, you don't see much of a grudge in six-man action. It's just some guys thrown together to take on the Davises or the Freebirds or Dusty Rhodes and the Road Warriors or whatever the one six-man that you push that you have in your company is. But tonight, it's a little bit different as there's heat here in this match. And there, he's dressed up as the man. Woo! Ric Flair. And he's led by comic book guy Anderson. See? Flair and Anderson all together. Maybe I should call Jarrell Clark, Jarrell Blanchard. Oh, and look who finally made his way back. Mikey Tenderfoot himself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ooh, how was that? A little blown up there, Mikey, huh? Yeah, a little bit. Hey, you told me Scoot wasn't going to take this lying down. You told me you had a surprise for everybody. I had no idea it would come in that forum, but you said that the Strong, the Shanes, and Vicious and Delicious will all have hell to pay, and you obviously started that out here tonight during our last match. The, the Strongs, Bruce, Valerie, it was crazy. I got the job done, just like I always do. They, they had it coming. And I tell you what, I'm not going to sit here and try to take sides. I call it straight down the middle of my commentary, just as you do in the ring. And I'm not going to say anything more about it right now. But what I will talk about is how Zout, Anderson, and Clark could turn their backs on a trio like the Davis family. This is exactly what it gets them. It gets them pummeled in the corners, and it looks like they're going to go for a triple slingshot. And they all get turned around. You God, you should have seen that coming, guys, because everybody else did from a mile away. The Russell Flex has gone back to 1980 with their magic time machine. Except for Jarrell Clark, who's about 1992 with his regulator's outfit. With his regulator's outfit, that's great. Jarrell Clark, Mr. 630. The knee injury has kept him from living up to that moniker as of late, but I'm sure he'll be coming out with that again in the very, very near future. The on-top champion of the sports entertainment extravaganza promotion, the original and only sex promotion, as far as I'm concerned, here in the state of Florida or anywhere else. And Speaking of things of that nature, there go the Davis brothers all hugging. You shouldn't be doing that with Fritzy Ollie already coming out of a butt pirate. But I digress. These blonde cats never listen to a word I have to say. Mark's out. At least he listens to me sometimes. If he listened to me a little bit more, he wouldn't have the win-loss record that he has here. But he's improved by leaps and bounds in recent weeks. And that winning streak of his, he hopes to continue it right here tonight in the six-man action. Last week, you ten of your ten of viewers may have heard me say that Ric Flair was dead and rolling over his grave at the antics of Bob Tolley, but to see him in the ring, it's good to see him back with Arn Anderson. Yes, that's true, and he's in a little bit better shape than the last time I remember seeing him, actually. Oh, and there it goes, Flair Flop! Flair Flop! Oh, but he gets the clotheslines. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to take the clotheslines. Watch your old 80s tapes correctly, Mark Zell. And there's the Flair Bump. There it goes. I tell you, he comes out here. He's imitated Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker to perfection. And he's got the Ric Flair down now as well. And he tags back in Jarrell Clark. I would think comic book guy Anderson may be itching to get into this ring. He's definitely got some issues with the Davis family as well. But Jarrell Clark, he told these guys he was going to be here 100% to try to help them out. And that's exactly what he's doing by taking the majority of the time in the ring thus far. What's Ole Anderson doing with a uh, Aquaman suit on? Where, where, oh my goodness. Leave Ole Anderson out of this. He couldn't book the black scorpion or whatever was a testament to that. So let's just leave him the hell out of any and all IPW conversation. Nice flip off the back flip off the rope by Jarrell Clark and a series of arm drags now taking out one of the Davis brothers. These guys are starting to look so much alike. It's reminding me of the Shanes. And one of them just rolls outside the ring there. But Jarrell says, no, you don't, brother. I'm bringing you back in. And Fritzy the Bud Pirate, not happy at all. Tully Blanchard, Claire and House, although he kind of looks like more like Dark Journey now. Yeah, I guess a little bit more like Dark Journey, or maybe even Paul Roma, if you want to start talking about all previous horsemen. But he was able to catch himself as he backed up off that top rope. The Davis brothers thought, oh, look Ouch. at that. He just kicks the, top, the bottom turnbuckle. Now, that's comedy relief for you right there, ladies and gentlemen, by the Davis family, as only IPW can bring you. I felt that before, and there's reason for him to be hurt like that. Those turnbuckles are hard. Yes, there are. People think that it's just a bunch of big padding, but it's not true. It's solid steel right underneath there. Very thin padding just so guys don't get cut open 
each and every time they run into the ropes or into the corner there. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, nice double suplex there on comic book guy Anderson. And he tried to reach up for the tag, but the ample gut of his kept him from doing a full sit-up and making the tag. So instead, he just gets drop kicked right in the chest. CBG Anderson is going to look to hit the spine buster here, just like his uh, father, Arn Anderson. I'm not sure if they're, you know, direct relatives. I didn't really know he was of... his father. I know Arn would have had to have him at a very, very young age for that to be the case. But I believe what he is, is that he's the third cousin, twice removed by marriage, of one Lars Anderson. Either way, he's getting the heat here and getting a big boot there from our man, Sean Royal. It's not Sean Royal. Sean Royal was a new breed, and actually I guess all these guys were as well. But that's another story for another time and another place. It's separate, the, baby. And the formal mortal decay, one of the Davis brothers gets a double pancake maneuver. But is that it? No, only a two count. Billy the Kid says, sorry kid, one, two, let's do it again. For the second time, would you explain to me what mortal decay actually is? Is it decay that can die? Actually, what it is, is nothing but something that kills the crowd, and we're not going to talk about that here any longer and waste our time. And you've got to hook the leg there, Mr. Davis, brother. Come on, I tell you all this each and every week. Don't you guys watch the show? I mean, I know most of you don't watch it unless your match is actually on, but your match was on not, long, not that long ago, and I told you the same freaking thing. You can't beat a seasoned veteran like Arn Anderson by not hooking the legs. And I tell you what, I like this double team, though. Once again, Mikey, that's not Arn Anderson. That's comic book guy Anderson. I know it's confusing since it's he's in the there with Ric Flair. But trust me, this guy, not quite to the level of Arn Anderson just yet, but he's one of the fastest rising youngsters here in all of IPW and therefore all of professional wrestling. But he's about the fast falling youngster right there as he gets his face kicked clean off by the super kick by I believe that's Phil Davis there in the ring right now. And he brings over Billy the Kid and says, look at this guy, that ain't Ric Flair. And is that Paul Roma? Davis twin number five getting upset there and getting the referee involved in things. And this is why you have an IPW senior official like Mike oh. Tennant, refereeing all the important matches. Big neck breaker there by Sean who? That's uh, Sean, St no, 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 Sean, Sean Davis. Right, Sean, right, right, Sean right, right, Davis, right. that's My what dog. it is. Okay, and come up, Guy Anderson coming off the ropes. Oh, big elbow by who I believe is Scott Davis. Obviously, I'm showing my ignorance here, but with the camera angle and the lighting and, like, the flu that I've been coming down with a touch of lately, I, I just can't quite see well enough to tell these two guys apart. Speaking of not being able to see well enough, my traveling opportunistic glaucoma is rising up again, and I'm not sure if that's on Anderson or CBG Anderson. Actually, as I told you, that's the relative of Lars, CBGA, and here he comes. Woo! Superfan marks out trying to do his best Ric Flair, and he's going for the figure four leg lock, and I don't care how old school this is, if it gets locked in and nobody interferes, it's over. It's, as I said, if nobody interferes, but then as I say it, everybody walks right into the ring, and Billy the Kid, taking the book out of all the dumbass referees that ever were, goes to the baby face side and clears him out first, because, you know, they don't cheat, so let's get them out of there first, and that allows the Davis family to do this. One, two, three. That's a it. cheap win, but a win indeed for the Davis family. You take it any way you can get it here in IPW. Fans, we got some more messages, and coming up soon, it's Pat Powers versus Frankie Capone, TV title on the line.